Hello and welcome to the episode where we're going to go through all the tomatoes that we're growing in the garden this year, or at least a good number of them. Uh, I already posted a spreadsheet of the 72 tomato tray. I'll probably go over a few more tomatoes than just that. Obviously not all 72 in that video were tomatoes, so those won't all be in this video. But hopefully we'll give you enough to, to kind of know what we're doing. And uh, I know <clears throat> some people say that they enjoy this type of video, so why don't we go ahead and get started. <music> First, I think we actually grew last year, and it is the blueberry tomato. <clears throat> so this is a purple tomato in the variety, very similar to like the indigo rose tomato, although this is perhaps even a little bit more uniformly dark. Uh, it has the anthocyanins, I believe they're called, that make it, yeah, there it is, anthocyanins, um, that make it healthy as well, and uh, that, that, that darker color. I've grown this before, I believe. I don't remember it being that memorable. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure whether it will have a spot in my garden or not, but if you really like it, do comment below. And actually, that's just a tip for any of these. If you want to make sure that it is one of the varieties that we feature on the channel, that we talk about on the channel, that we show you growing on the channel, then comment below and I'll make sure that the ones that are the most popular, that give out the most comments, absolutely go into my garden here rather than being ones that I give to someone else. So I have already started planting some out and actually I'm just kind of grabbing them randomly from those I've started. So I, I haven't had any intentionality in, in what I've planted, but uh, do comment below and I'll make sure to get those somewhere in the garden that we can follow up on. All right, next one up is an old favorite of mine, the Chadwick Cherry Tomato. Now this is, to me, just your very good staple cherry tomato. It's red, it's actually a little bit bigger than some. Um, I've, I've had them probably go, oh, I, I wouldn't, probably about golf ball size that, that I get them. And um, I think they're just absolutely wonderful and kind of the model for cherry tomatoes. When I say it's the best cherry tomato I ever had, well, all around, when you're talking about all the qualities that make a tomato great, yes, flavor-wise, it's very, very good. Um, but I'll actually say the one... And I'll probably get to it here in just a little bit. But the one that I thought was the most uh, outstanding flavor I've ever had was probably the Texas Wild Cherry. And that's just um, just down our list. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, although the Texas Wild Cherry is one that I think you'd get sick of very quickly. Whereas the Chadwick Cherry is just, you know, your good staple. Pop them, eat them as a snack type of a tomato. So... Anyhow, that is the Chadwick Cherry Tomato. Next up, it's called a Gargamel Tomato. I'm not myself familiar with this. Some of you may be wondering why I have these varieties that I don't already know about. Well, I participate in some uh, seed exchanges, and I get some from members of a group that I'm in, and then I just grow, grow them out some. So... Uh, some, some will grow out, some won't, and, and you're going to help me decide which ones. So right now we're just doing the research to see what they're all about. I love researching tomatoes, and you know it's, it's very fun to see all the different varieties. And then hopefully you'll get to see me grow these different varieties, so you'll actually have a little bit better footage um, to base your decision next year when you garden on or if, if you're still ordering seeds for this year so anyhow one of the prettiest antho varieties so this is once again going to be one of those purple tomatoes now here's just a confession even though i gave out cherokee purple tomatoes this year the purple tomato is not necessarily my favorite type of tomato 
Uh, it often has kind of an earthy tone or even, I don't know, even a subtle spiciness to it. And don't get me wrong, I like spicy things, but not, not in this way for the tomato. It's not my favorite flavor. Um, and by spicy, I don't mean that it's hot. It doesn't have that sort of a spice. It's almost as, as crazy as it sounds. When I ha first had an indigo rose tomato, I said that it, it reminded me of, of salami in terms of its spicing, of its flavor. That was a subtle, <laughs> subtle reminding. That's kind of the earthy tone that it has. And, and I'm sure everyone will think I'm crazy for saying it tasted like salami, but it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit different. And I find that most, most of these that are part of the antho varieties have something like that, a little bit of that more earthy tone. So anyhow, it looks like we have a number of the, the purple ones that are available in this group. And it's just a matter of whether they're what we grow out or not. But there you go. That's the Gargamel tomato. Next up is the one I've already started talking about, which is the Texas Wild Cherry. And I will say this. Though I, I said good reviews about it, it's, it's a smaller tomato. And, you know, you're probably talking, I don't know, a little more than dime size in its... Uh, diameter but let's look here open pollinated early maturing plant produces heavy yields of a half to three quarter ounce red cherry tomatoes they're very sweet and flavorful perfect fresh eating right off the vine or in salads one of the best cherry tomato and taste testing trials plant produces tons of small cherry tomatoes so it it basically does agree with me that it is an outstanding variety in terms of flavor. Um, it does comment here, and I find it kind of funny, excellent choice for home gardeners. Part of what it's saying there is that it probably isn't durable for transportation, doesn't necessarily have a good shelf life, um, and that stands to reason. It's kind of a, a smaller tomato. There's not a lot to it, but it has this great, intense, extraordinarily sweet flavor. I highly recommend trying it. This year, I will actually be trying another type of wild cherry in addition to this, which we'll get to hopefully later in this video. Um, and we'll see if, if it's just all wild cherries kind of have that flavor or if it's specific to the Texas wild cherry tomato. But let's go ahead and move on to our next tomato variety, which is the Xanadu. Gigi. Xanadu Gigi tomato. Green goddess is what that GG stands for. The Xanadu Green Goddess is an indeterminate tomato with one of the strangest mysteries ever to come out of a grow out. Rarely do bee crosses happen in a garden, but this one did. And the anthocyanin was unexpectedly put into the surprise beef stick and was then found the following year by Trisha Rosamilia in her garden. So this is just a crossbreed that happened by chance and it has one thing once again those anthocyanins but it looks like it's actually perhaps in a green tomato so you kind of have this purple and green look um, which is really interesting uh, i don't know how it tastes you know this this says sweet and well balanced um, but obviously until you actually taste it you don't know what exactly it's like so I, I know that if one is going for novelty, that, that coloration might be something that is really sought after. Now this has pictures of lots of different things here. Um, this also calls them Xanadu Green Goddess. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess next up, the Copper River tomato. I feel like this was also in our video last year. I don't know that I grew it out. Um, so there's, I guess, a preview of what it will look like. Copper River Tomato. It 
It's a beautiful bicolor tomato that is splashed with greens and purples. When sliced, there's nothing like the color experience that it presents. It's interesting how it seems this list is just full of purples and I guess now the green purples. A um, lot, lot of that anthocyanin rich stuff I was talking about. So, uh, Although nothing here says that it's actually anthocyanin rich. But uh, greens and purples sliced, there's nothing like the color experience it presents. Disease resistant, produces a good amount of 6 to 10 ounce tomatoes ripen about 80 days after transplant rich and complex which is not necessarily saying they're good notice the omission of sweet or delicious in those that description so <laughs> i don't know uh, copper river is a option an option as well uh, let's look here at what we have next <clears throat> Now this one's an interesting one. It's called the golden currant tomato. And so it's supposed to be just like these small little Yeah, just little yellow golden currants. The plants are quite sprawling and require there are a lot of space or a very sturdy trellising system as plants can grow eight to ten feet tall. Supposed to be one of, or suspected to be one of the parents of the sun gold. More fruity than the yellow currant and sweeter than the orange currant. So I guess one of the fun things, if it does happen to be a parent of the sun gold, and obviously we don't know that, but if it does, it'd be a fun, no matter what, it could be a fun thing to try crossbreed things with and see what we can do. I might be trying a little bit more crossbreeding intentionally this year in my garden and uh I'll, I'll do videos on it if i do it uh but this might be a fun a fun one to do that with because obviously the sun gold is kind of the uh i guess you would say popular tomato for gardeners to grow one of the more mainstream popular types of tomatoes so next up we have the violet jasper tomato. Violet jasper is apparently also called the tzi bu tzi bu tomato. <laughs> uh, once again, we have purple and green. I don't know what's with all this purple and green, but. Uh, now that's interesting to show kind of the scale. I'm assuming those are chopsticks. So it's kind of just, it's a more of almost your cherry tomato size. Um, root fruit weighs one to three ounces. Smooth, has a good tasting dark purplish red flesh. Amazing yield. Most productive tomatoes they've ever grown. Wow. Great variety from marketing. Introduced to you from China along with this twin sister, Topaz in the yellow tomato section of the store. Well, um, so that's interesting. It, it might be interesting to grow just to see what uh, the, and this is interesting, sorry to interrupt myself, but I caught the inconsistent flavor with the purple flesh and smoky flavor. So there you go. That might be a better way of identifying what I was calling spicy early on. It's more of a smoky flavor, and that probably fits with what I was saying about kind of a salami-ish taste too. It's a smoky flavor. Um, but anyhow, the <laughs> violet jasper might be interesting to grow just for a matter of seeing if it's as productive as this is claiming it to be. Other than that, it's just yet another of these <laughs> very similar types of tomato that uh, apparently everyone in my group likes to grow. Next up, we have the Elfin tomato. Elfin tomato. Yeah, it was on the Baker Creek thing. That's why it was wrong. 
And I also typed Allen, apparently. This open pollinated version of grape tomato has the same wonderful sweet flavor, size, and shape as the original grape, but has the advantage of shorter plants. Elfin clusters of delicious, uniquely flavored grape-shaped cherry tomatoes have a sweetness that is unmistakably grape. And this says that it is a determinant variety. So I'm going to actually find something here to write that down so that I know which varieties I might be growing that would be determinant. Um, so we'll just make a note that the elfin is determinate. Okay. Now I will admit that it looks like the one that we're doing here, the one I planted outside or as I was hardening it off, I think its stem actually broke. So I don't know if the old German no, it wasn't the old Germans that stem broke. I think it was a German queen that stem broke. So I think this is still viable. So old German, an heirloom originally grown by the Mennonite community of Virginia and one of the best ever varieties for slicing. Well, best ever is a pretty big claim. Huge fruits weigh one and a half to two pounds each with an unusual boat shape. It's indeterminate. So, uh, you know, that sounds like a fun tomato. It... Uh, does look like, you know, as is common with bigger heirloom tomatoes, there might be some cracking, even a little mild cat phasing, but that uh, it claims to be one of the best ever varieties for slicing, and it's huge. So that could be a lot of fun to, to kind of look at on this channel. If, if that's something you're interested in, remember we're commenting below on any that we want to see us uh, grow. And it's funny, I'm looking here. I, I'm not growing this right. I don't have the seeds, but I see Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato. And just as a scream of consciousness, I'm going to click on it. And a, now this calls it a spicy undertone. I wonder if they're using it the same way I was earlier, not meaning spicy. The flesh is green, blush with pink, meaty, and flavorful. It makes interesting juice. I mean, that just, if nothing else, the visual look of this, I mean, basically it looks like someone's taking green food coloring to it. Um, so that's, that's kind of at least interesting. So I'm not having this be an option because I don't have these seeds, but it's kind of fun. If you happen to have ever grown Aunt Ruby's German green tomato, Please comment below and let us know how that went. Was it a good tomato? Was it as fun as it looks like it might be in this video? All right. Next up, we have what is called the Lavender Lake Tomato. Let's see here. I must have mistyped lavender. Yes, I did. Oh, well. Cinevia Ozero, translated from Russian to Lavender Lake. It makes lovely slices on the plate, good for growing in pots or in the garden or greenhouse, indeterminate. Regular leaf plant produces 8 to 12 ounce gorgeous deep purple black. Perfect beef steak tomatoes while sweet meat and very tart gel make for great fresh eating or cooking. Well, it looks like this year we might be completely sick of purple tomatoes so ironic that i chose the cherokee purple uh for the seed giveaway but <laughs> anyhow uh there, there there are a lot of different purple uh, varieties out there and i guess basically what you're finding is or we are finding is there's a lot of interest in it because it's kind of the new thing right now or it has been the new thing in the last couple of years and so my group, which is a bunch of garden enthusiasts, all probably got their various purple tomatoes as part of that trend, and now they're sharing them with me. <laughs> so, anyhow, next up we have the pink bumblebee tomato. So that's kind of fun looking. A stunning cherry tomato of recent breeding from artisan seeds. The fruit has a bright, sweet flavor, and the color is vibrant. Fire engine red with golden orange striping. Vigorous vines yield crack-resistant fruit over a very long season. Tolerates cool nighttime temps and hot days. Salad will never be the same. 
So it looks like the reviews are really good on this, except here we go. Here's one saying it's mushy. But on whole, it looks like the reviews are very good about it. It looks like they have a long season. So yeah, that might be a fun one to grow, the pink bumblebee. So next up is the German Queen. This is the one that I think has a broken stem. So we might not get to grow it this year. But we'll look at it anyway. And if you really want me to grow it, still comment below because I'm sure I've probably got seeds and I could start another one. The old-fashioned beefsteak has large, sweet fruits that are lower in acid and quite meaty, making them perfect for slicing. The indeterminate vines will grow tall and bear fruit all summer long, so be sure to steak strongly or cage. One slice makes a great sandwich filling, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So yeah, that's the German Queen. It says it's lower in acid, very sweet. So that is the German Queen. Next up, we have what is called the Cosmic Eclipse. Now, many of you may remember the cosmic, or excuse me, the atomic grape tomato here. Here it is on the left sidebar uh, that we talked about with last year's garden. This looks kind of similar to me. Yeah, and it's from the same guy, uh, Brad Gates, who's the Brad of Brad's atomic grape. Totally unique variety is amazing. Smooth, two to three ounce fruit. Starts off green with dark green stripes and striking indigo colored splashes. Fruits ripened to spangled brick red with green trips, complemented by lots of black anthocyanin, giving this a very striking multicolor finish. Very good, sweet, rich, and juicy flavor. Great ability to hang on the vine, ripe, and stay edible better than most. Good post-harvest shelf life, maintaining a superb eating quality for weeks. Very productive, too. A triumph, it says, this release is. So, um... It could be interesting. And again, as kind of your, your greens and your purples, it seems to be a common theme for the year. Uh, this says it's a strong flavor, very acidic. The plant, plant almost smells like pine tree. Hmm. So yeah, I'm actually, I'm curious enough. I, I probably will try growing this. But still, comment below if you want to see us grow it. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not confident I'm going to like it, but I like the idea of a nice acidic tomato. You may remember we did the Nineveh tomato, which was supposed to be very acidic and, and it, it tasted delicious. So um, I guess we may try this out, but let me know if you want to do that or something else. We had gone through Cosmic Eclipse. Next up, we have the Black Dragon. Tomato. Hmm. Looks a little bit purple and green. Red toned chocolate plums in abundance. This was my most prolific tomato of the growing season. My tasting notes I described the flavor as rich, tangy, sweet, and tomatoey. Delicious. At least that's not the uh, smoky flavor. I bought the seeds from a U.S. vendor, but read that this variety originally came here from Irish Seed Saver Association. Interestingly, I could not find anything out of the Black Dragon. However, they do list an identical variety as Black Plum, which they describe as an heirloom variety from Russia. I therefore wonder if this is a rename for sales enhancement situation. Since I do not have a certainty of this, I will list this variety under the name of Purchase, which was Black Dragon. So, yeah, this, I guess, is a market where someone's selling the seeds themselves. Um, but anyhow, that is the Black Dragon tomato. And next up is Amy's Sugar Jam Tomato.
Developed by Jeff McCormick, who crossed the small-fruited red cherry with the larger heirloom Tappy's Finest, Amy Sugar Jim is named in appreciation of Amy Hereford, whose grandmother Tappy introduced Jeff to heirloom tomatoes in 1982. The Sugar Jim portion of the name refers to the sweet flavor and the tiny light gold sparkles in the red skin. Our Tomato Fest organic tomato seed produces indeterminate, regular leaf, tall, sprawling, vigorous tomato plants that yield huge crops of two ounce, one and a half inch golf ball sized red, meaty, juicy tomatoes that have a small core and delicious, sweet, well balanced flavors. Perfect choice. Snacking tomato salad, tomato, or four tomato sauces. Sweet, candy on the vine, not to be missed. It sounds very good. <laughs> Is it going to be different than our other cherry tomatoes? Who knows? But it, it sounds good. Um, and, you know, the pictures look like very perfect, round cherry tomatoes. So we may see. Again, if you do want to see that variety or any of the varieties that we have talked about so far today, grown and discussed on this channel please do just comment below and let us know that that's what you would like to see next up is our dark galaxy tomato i wonder how much this is going to be like the cosmic eclipse wow that's fascinating it actually looks different um, but for sure unique enough that i i genuinely said wow when i saw it with Mottled skin resembling a scene from deep space. Each fascinating fruit depicts the depth and beauty of the night sky. Dark Galaxy bears two to eight ounce fruit that is flattened with red and orange stripes covered in random speckles and layered by deep blue. The vines themselves display a purple flush and grow five to six feet tall while producing good amounts of the stunning tomatoes that begin to ripen in about 75 days. The taste is a perfect balance of tangy sweetness so juicy and refreshing each fruit is a unique work of art sure to be a gardener and tabletop centerpiece another stunning tomato from brad gates so it is from the same guy that gave us the uh, brad's atomic grape and the cosmic eclipse but this is a different variety and that's fascinating because here they look to be pretty uniformly round tomatoes and here it has more interesting looks so I don't know if I don't know enough to but have conjecture that perhaps there um, is is still some instability in his strain I don't I don't know I wouldn't I would not imagine that's the case um, so maybe growing conditions alter the shape of a tomato I do not know but that's fascinating so Looks like the reviews here are pretty poor overall. So I don't know if we want to try that variety. It is an interesting variety, definitely in terms of looks. Boy, it is a pricey one um, compared to some of the others. So that's interesting. Obviously, mine came through trade, so I didn't didn't see that price point. But but yeah, interesting. Dark Galaxy Tomato. If you would like us to grow it, remember to comment below. Next up, we have the black cherry tomato. Wow, that's a lot of tomatoes on there. You know what? I actually grew this last year. I did not get that many tomatoes on my uh, my bundles of tomatoes, my bunches of tomatoes, I should say. Uh, beautiful black cherries look like large, dusky purple brown grapes. They have that rich flavor that makes black tomatoes famous. Large vines yield very well, very unique and delicious. So there you go. Now I would actually say I ate some of these and I did not find them to have nearly as much of that as this calls it rich flavor that makes black tomatoes famous. That, that smoky flavor we've kept talking about throughout this video. Um, so I actually, I mean, I did enjoy them. So <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm I'm not consistent. Um, so this is looks like it's got good reviews. I think I would have actually reviewed it favorably as well. It is possible I actually shot a video, but I don't remember putting one up. So maybe I just never put it together and put it up. If, it, if that's the case, I'll try to look at old footage and see if I can get something up um, sometime while we're waiting for these to grow. 
but it's possible I just didn't shoot a video on them last year either. But I'm pretty confident I did grow them, but that doesn't mean we can't grow them again. So that's the black cherry tomato, if you want us to grow that. Next up, we have what is called the gold truffle tomato. Gold truffle tomato. So, it looks like we might have images, so maybe we'll use that to get to the actual tomato plants direct link for this. Japanese gold truffle. Hmm. So these are actually pear shaped, it appears. These attractive Russian tomatoes have the characteristic size and shape of Bartlett pear and are bright orange gold in color with some areas of green. They're good cropping plants and the fruit store well. I notice here again, there's no discussion of how they actually taste, but that they are definitely unique. Now, I do find that uh, blossom end rot is often a problem for pear shaped tomatoes or any of your Roma style tomatoes. So that may be an issue here as well. But that is no reason that we can't grow them out and it might even be a fun challenge to try to prevent the blossom end rot and we can share that with the channel. So if you would like us to grow the Japanese gold truffle and feature it in our videos, please do comment below and let us know that you would like that. The next one up is Blonde Kumpfchen Tomato. guess it's the blonde cuff chin tomato. Also known as the little blonde girl, East German variety obtained by seed savers from Guttersleben Seed Bank. Small golden yellow one inch fruits, born in giant clusters, excellent sweet taste, enormous yields, and rarely a cracked fruit, bears until frost, indeterminate, 75 to 80 days from transplant. So, this sounds like a good variety, a fun variety. So, maybe if you want to see that, you can comment below with that as well. Next up, we have Fred's tie-dye. Now that's interesting. This says, somewhere there I just saw dwarf tomato. It is a determinant dwarf. So, definitely going on my list for the uh, dwarf tomatoes, or for determinate tomatoes, Fred's tie dye determinant dwarf. Just hand writing it here while, while I'm recording. Um, so it, it, it was a cross between the dwarf wild Fred and the pink Berkeley tie dye. So that's fun. Um, Regular leaf dwarf plants are among the taller growing of the dwarfs. <laughs> they are vigorous and productive with fruits and are medium to medium large size, round purple and jagged gold and green stripes and deep crimson flesh of black tomatoes. Fred's tie dye has tie dye has a rich, intense, balanced flavor. I laugh because are you really a dwarf plant if you're among the taller growing of the dwarfs? It's probably not something to aspire to when you are a dwarf plant. Um, for those who do not know. The dwarf plant movement has been 
a very aggressively pursued recently. Um, and they're, they're trying to get enough varieties of dwarf tomatoes that hypothetically you could have almost all the flavor and interesting colors and everything that exists in normal, um, normal tomato varieties in dwarfs and that would allow patio gardeners small space gardeners just people that want you know a quick turnaround tomato plant to have accessibility to all of those different varieties so that's part of what's going on right here i believe the the movement i'm talking about is uh actually being spearheaded by Craig LaHoye, um, but which is, is right in here is why I kind of highlighted him. Um, and I think I talked about him in an earlier video. I forget which video, but I, I'm pretty sure I did talk about him. So anyhow, that is, um, the tie-dye tomato. Let's go ahead and look at a picture or two of it. Yeah, so it, it's a, it's kind of a green and red striped tomato. Um, actually kind of reminds me of the green vernissage tomato a little bit. Um, or maybe the pink vernissage tomato. I'm not sure, one of the vernissage tomatoes. Back to our list here. The next one is the Kleeblatt. Von Togo. Trefle du Togo. Huh, that is tiny. Look at how tiny that is. That's the end of a finger there. Hmm. Well, it looks very nice, except for being so ridiculously tiny. And of course, this is not in English. Look at that plate of little tiny tomatoes. I think part of what makes it seem so small is like, they aren't much smaller than your average cherry tomato, but it's just you don't normally see this shape of a tomato in that size. So, um, Let's see if we can get something more in English, or I could run it through a translator. Well, let's try the trefle du Togo. I think it'll just make it French. Mid-season variety, compact and deterrent plants with regularly foliage. Very cute, small reddish pink and ruffled fruits. Very good, full flavor. So, yeah, I mean, that might be kind of fun. If you're kind of into the, the tiny varieties and seeing things that look like they're, they're larger peers, um, but that are, are much more small then this one might be a fun one for us to grow. So feel free to comment below if you want to see that. Next up, we have the cream sausage tomato. Hmm. New and stunning tomato, elongated paste tomato that is creamy white to pale yellow in color. Sweet, sleep. Mm. The sweet flavor should be a hit with gourmet chefs. Bushy plants are quite productive. Think of the new sauce colors this beauty will create. So yeah, we've got a, a white tomato. It's called a sausage tomato because it kind of looks like a little sausage, I would assume. Looks like our reviews are fairly good. There's the blossom end rot, which I was assuming we would see because... Yeah, there's another one because that is, again, any of this kind of 
uh, Roma shape in a tomato, you get to see that blossom in a lot more. I'm not sure it has anything to do with the shape. It's just the, the way those varieties happen to interact with their soils. So um, just always keep that in mind if you're looking at something that's more of a Roma or a pear shape, then you're always going to have uh, the higher chance of blossom end rot. Next up, we have what is called the Sandberg tomato. Which apparently was new in 2016, at least new to this cellar. Very flavorful, flavorful white variety that looks yellow when ripe. Wonderful juice content and mix of melon-like flavors, which are pretty as a picture, and you will pick plenty of them. Melon-like flavors, huh? That might be good. Let's see if we see anything else. So not, not a lot of people selling the Sandberg. And I guess the General Lee is an offspring of the Sandberg. Fascinating. Okay, I'm getting distracted again. Let's go to, now this is one of those other dwarf varieties that we actually already read about. Um, it's called the Berkeley tie dye. Tomato. Or it was at least a parent of Now this is fascinating. There's a pink Berkeley tie-dye and there is a Berkeley tie-dye green tomato. I don't know. Oh, yes I do. It says Berkeley tie-dye pink is my seed variety. So um, this is the one I guess that it would be. And it looks like that. Now that one definitely looks like a Vernissage tomato. Almost exactly like a Vernissage tomato. Um, at least in that picture right there. Anyhow. Compact plants produce beautiful 8 to 12 ounce fruit with very sweet, rich, dark tomato flavor. 10 out of 10 people liked the port wine colored beefsteak with metallic green stripes better than Cherokee purple in a farmer's market taste off. So, there you go. I guess I gave you the wrong tomato seed. Because <laughs> people like, uh, like this better than the Cherokee purple. Now this says grown by Brad. I wonder if we're again talking about the Brad from the Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato. So favorite tomato, highly recommended, best tomatoes ever. Nice but prone to late blight and eat it quick because it goes mushy. So pretty good reviews overall. Um, If everyone says it's a great tasting tomato, then maybe it's worth trying. Um, up to you. Next up is the Floridade tomato. Floridade tomato. This variety does well in hot, humid climates. The red fruit are six to seven ounces and grow on determinate vines. So once again, we've got a determinate to add to my determinate list. So let's go ahead and do that. Floridade. And it is worth noting as I'm sitting here thinking about it, there was nothing on that pink tie dye saying that it was a, um, dwarf right so let's look at that again <laughs> it does say a compact plant so I don't know if this would have been classified as a dwarf it was just one of the things that was bred for a dwarf. Um, it was a parent of a dwarf on, on that other variety. I think it was, uh, let's see, Fred's tie dye. So 
<clears throat> this is just a compact plane. I don't know what it is. I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it's determined or indeterminate. But uh, it is compact. So anyhow, I got us off the topic of this lovely Floridade heirloom tomato, which was a determinate variety. It does well in hot, humid climates, six to seven ounces, and grows to determinate vines. Firm, have a good flavor, a good choice for home gardens and market growers, ready in 80 days. This southern tomato, Dade County, which we all, of course, remember from the 2000 election. Excellent disease resistance and adapts well to heat and humidity. Firm and flavorful, it performs well for both home and market gardens. So, it looks kind of like a, a, a good tomato. I don't know. <laughs> um, did we see anything firm and flavorful, it says. So, as the discussion of it, let's see what the fast facts are. Open pollinate determinant. We already know that. Um, yeah, and the reviews have not had any reviews at Everwild Farms. So, let's go on to what would be our next variety which is the Cherokee Purple. Now we already discussed the Cherokee Purple in the video in which I gave you seeds for the Cherokee Purple tomato. But let's look at it again. Yay, Cherokee Purple. Old Cherokee Indian Heirloom, pre-1890 variety. Beautiful, deep, dusky, purple-pink color, superb sweet flavor, and very large size fruit. Try this one for real old-time tomato flavor. Favorite dark tomato, one of our best-selling varieties. That's funny, because they say it's our favorite dark tomato, and yet they had that other one that they said was beat, beat this 10 out of 10 times. Uh, maybe maybe it's not considered a dark variety because if I recall that one had some striping in it but there it is now this this one is also very well reviewed I'm going to try it again this year and see if I like it better this year as I am a better gardener than when I tried it before uh, <laughs> and, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll get a good tomato out of it. I, I got tomatoes before, and I just, for whatever reason, didn't really care for them. But um, I think I might have messed up some things with them. So anyhow. So all right, now we're going for the sugar lump tomato. All right, here's the sugar lump tomato. A sweet German heirloom that produces heavy yield straight through until frost. Clusters of six to 12 smooth, deep red fruits, each averaging three fourths to one inch in diameter. Excellent eating quality and flavor indeterminate. So that's the sugar lump tomato. That's indeterminate, so. Excellent eating quality and flavor, it says. Okay. So yeah, when I said the green vernissage earlier, now I was referring to probably the pink vernissage that, that the other tomato looked like, because I'm catching the green vernissage here in the, the right-hand column. Sorry, I'm keeping getting distracted by things. Let's go on with the Nineveh tomato. Now I did a whole video on this tomato last year, which I will go ahead and I'll link right up above here. If you want to watch the video on the Nineveh tomato, it's an extreme. <laughs> Hey, that's always nice. I've actually got this uh, in a, a private browsing mode, so it do doesn't have any of my uh, saved preferences. And what do we see but my own garden channel as all the video recommendations. That's all very exciting. We see the Nineveh tomato itself. It's an extremely acidic. I apparently spelled it right here, but I didn't spell it right typing it into Google, but um, but yeah, so that's that's really neat. So this was last year when I did the same video that I'm doing now, and and then here is the specific video on the Nineveh tomato, and then basically a, a garden tour that I guess I did, and maybe I hit the, um, 
And then have a tomato in it. I doubt it, though, because this garden tour, I think, was specific to the things that I'd given away in the 2017 seat giveaway. So uh, anyhow, that's, that's really cool. So, uh, you know, if you search for Nineveh tomato, hopefully it will do the same thing for you and pop up with the video on Nineveh tomato that we already did. And you can watch it or, of course, follow the link that I placed earlier in a card when we started talking about the Nineveh tomato. So uh, despite all that, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, Baker Creek page on the Nineveh tomato. Look at that pretty thing. Now, I guess this is just a reviews page, which might mean that they're no longer selling it. Let's look if it pops up. Yeah, they're no longer, at least this season, for whatever reason. I don't know how they determine what they're going to continue or not. Probably economics. Um, but they aren't selling the Nineveh tomato anymore there and I don't see a lot of places that are so this apparently comes from Iraq, and they say that it's not been cultivated there due to the war and hybrids and so on and so forth. But yeah, we have the Nineveh here. Again, we did a full video. I'm going to quit talking about it, and we will move on to our next variety. And I will will say this before we move on, which is just because we did a video on it last year does not mean we couldn't do it this year. And who knows, maybe... Uh, Maybe we'll even cross it with something we're growing this year or something else. So feel free to comment below if you have any good ideas and you want the Nineveh to be part of those good ideas. Now, if you're getting tired here, we're, we're getting close. We're, we're, we'll keep going. I may be rambling a bit too much. This video is going to be over an hour. <laughs> Yeah, I just woke you up now. Now I'll see a huge drop off in watch time right right at this moment because I, I said that you've been watching for an hour. Um, reviews of the pearly pink tomato. So this is another one that they must not be actually on right now. So yeah, this is one I've actually saved from a seed that I once upon a time actually bought from Baker Creek. Um, now, here's a little thing, and maybe this is advice for all tomato varieties. So there was a year where I grew it in my garden and my mother actually grew it in her garden. And one of us watered a lot less and one watered a lot more. I think I was probably the last. It was before I had set up my drip system, and I'd say I severely underwatered. But in my garden, I believe it was an extremely sweet, but not terribly prolific tomato. And in her garden, it was an extraordinarily prolific, but pretty bland and watery <laughs> tasting tomato. So, um, it is interesting. Before you fully judge a tomato, you might want to make sure of the conditions in which you're growing it because it tasted a lot better with the deprivation of water than with the masses of water. And uh, you've got to strike that balance, though, because it produced a lot less in my garden as well. And see... This says a little bigger than a cherry or grape, more of a two to three bite tomato, which was the way it was for my mother's, but was not the way it was for mine. Mine was smaller. Anyhow, that's the pearly pink tomato. Napa Chardonnay. Oh, it happens to be here on our season as well. 
Here's the Napa Chardonnay tomato. I think we grew it last year as well, or at least we had it in the video of things we might grow last year. Um, super amazing flavor with many who tasted it for the first time, proclaiming it the very best cherry type they've ever tasted. Also, this variety is very easy to grow and does especially well in containers. Pretty good reviews all across. I have had it before. It is a good tomato. I enjoyed it. Again, that doesn't mean that we can't do it this time if you want to see it. It's a, it's a tasty yellow variety. I would actually say it's more tasty than a lot of the yellow varieties are. Not that color necessarily affects the flavor of um, a plant as there are good and bad of every, every type. So. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Armenian tomato is our next one. Okay. Looks like a nice big tomato that is of the orange and red variety. That's a very fascinating flavor or a color profile there. A big bicolor tomato that probably displays the true colors inside and out. A very sweet variety of Armenian can weigh as much as 18 ounces and begin to ripen after 85 days. When sliced, you'll experience some of the prettiest marbling of deep reds and yellows. Also fruity, meaty, and very juicy. Great sandwich tomato, perfect for the market. And next up is the big boy. Now this is a classic tomato. Probably the type of tomato that you can get at the store. High yields, large fruit, body plants. Yeah, this is like you got a Home Depot, Walmart. They're going to have big boy tomato plants ready there for you. Big sandwich type slicer between 60 and 32 ounces. Smooth, bright red fruit and a flavor that everybody likes. It bears heavily in mid season, yet the indeterminate. Hmm. Sorry, swiped. Heavily in mid season, yet the indeterminate vines continue fruiting, but not as heavily until frost. Plants in their test garden in Alabama, where conditions are excellent, have yielded 100 tomatoes each through a 10 week harvest season. Now that's pretty crazy. 100 tomatoes each plant. Now, obviously, they don't necessarily do the single stem, which will perhaps decrease yields for any given plant. But that is a lot of, of tomatoes. Think about that. That's 100 tomatoes per plant. Let's imagine you planted 10 tomato plants. That'd be 1,000 tomatoes. <laughs> okay, so um, that's fascinating. Big boy tomato. Maybe we should grow it, although it is very um very standard although as it says the name is easy to remember okay next up we have the red siberian okay i think i actually did a video on this one as well so yeah why not post a link in the description above and Early maturing plant produces heavy yields of two to five ounce bright red tomatoes. They're sweet and flavorful, perfect for salad slicing and sandwiches. Plant is capable of setting fruit even at 38 degrees. One of the earliest maturing varieties on the market takes only seven weeks when transplanted outdoors. A very popular variety grown in Alaska, cold tolerant. Plant requires support either staking or cages. Excellent choice for home gardens. Heirloom variety from Siberia, Russia. And it says it's determinant. So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and not prune our Siberian then. <laughs> I think last year I did and I was amazed by how low its yield was. Um, but that's probably because it was determinate. So red Siberian determinate. I'll have to go back and rewatch that variety. Um, yeah, I don't think my video popped up when we went to YouTube, did it? Let's look. 
Oh, it's not showing videos. Let's see, is this going to be my variety? My video. It is going to be my video. Get the ad there. Yep, my video. Red Siberian Tomato. So, feel free to watch that. The link should already be up. Next up, we got Espansky Gigantic Tomato. Well, those look gigantic. So it looks like there's not a lot of things talking about the Spansky Gigantic. Once again, we've found a page that's not in English. But look at that. Look how big that is. That feels big. I mean, that's a scale I'm guessing it's sitting on. So it's got to be, I don't know, huge. But it, it does say gigantic, so... Look what this says. No, oh, is that just the side I was just on? Hmm. All right, let's translate this page. Variety whose traceability is unclear could be Spanish origin, but its original name having been lost, it was renamed a Russian name. Big red fruit on average of plus or minus 500 grams, but can exceed a kilo. Beef steak type with variable shape depending on the size, most often lobbed and ribbed. Beef meaty flesh and dense with excellent rich flavor. Very robust plant with broad development, regular foliage and indeterminate growth generous mid-season production so this would obviously be a big one in fact let's go one kilogram to lbs that's what i thought we're about 2.2 pounds would be a kilogram so that would be one very large tomato at 2.2 pounds should uh, it actually exceed a, a kilo as it suggests that it can so that might be kind of a fun novelty to grow a gigantic tomato. Obviously, there's not a lot of people growing this Spansky Gigantic, at least not here, since there's not much on it. Next up, we have the Mint Julep Tomato. I misspelled that one. Julep. Also known as the Michael Poland tomato, apparently. Another plum shape. So what did we already say about plum shape? Blossom in rot is possibly a problem. Extremely high yields with one plant often produces as much as five gallons of fruit indeterminate. Obviously have this yellow and green look and uh, sweet flavor that is less tart than other green varieties. So there you go. All right, I think that's the end of the list that was on the other video. Let's see a few others that we might want to throw in that I'm also growing. Oh yeah, I promised you another wild cherry variety I'm growing. Here we go, Matt's wild cherry tomato. Mm Indeterminate, 65 days. C 
collect it in the wild. Well, silly. Yes, it's the wild cherry tomato. Go figure. Plants bear loads of intensely sweet and flavorful half-inch deep red cherry tomatoes. Plants are vigorous, disease-resistant, sprawling, self sows readily. Always a favorite favorite to add our tomato tastings. So my guess is this is going to be pretty similar to the Texas wild cherry. Um, might even just be different names for what is roughly a similar variety of wild cherry tomatoes but we will we will taste it and we will find out um, what what it is like uh, assuming that it grows for us next up is the and still obviously common if you want to see it dad's sunset tomato So this looks to be an orange tomato. They don't have a scale here, like a coin or something. It looks like it might be more of a cherry style. Let's see what it says. Fruit is very smooth, 10 ounces. Oh, it's large 10 ounce fruit, never mind. <laughs> large 10 ounce fruit is very smooth, uniform, and beautiful, glowing orange in color. It keeps very well. One of the best flavored tomatoes we have tried. So that's interesting. We did the Kellogg's breakfast tomato as part of our seed giveaway last year. That was obviously an orange tomato, a great flavor. I uh, don't know how this would compare. It does seem to have a much more uniform, clean look than maybe that did. I wonder if it was Kellogg's breakfast offered by, yeah, it's offered by Breaker Creek too. That was that one there which hey while we're here i also have some of those seeds started so kelly's breakfast tomato we probably have a full video on it yes we do we have a full video on it as well um i doubt i'm well enough optimized that it, my video comes up when we're looking on youtube or on uh, google but let's find out. Oh, I left a G on the Kellogg. Did I? Oh, wow. My, mine does indeed come up. Now, it is still possible that Google's tra tracking my IP or something and just giving me feedback on my own video. But yeah, you guys go ahead and search for it too to see if mine is the one that comes up. Um, but yeah, that's the Kellogg's Breakfast Tomato video that we did. Yeah, that's another variety that will be growing again this year. Let us know below if you would like to see it. Next up is the Sunrise Bumblebee tomato. It's funny how these seem to be like kind of going in a patterns. We had a bunch of the purples early on and then maybe some green varieties for a while and then maybe some red varieties and now we're kind of doing an orange varieties. I didn't plan it that way. Just kind of the way it's falling, I guess. Chefs love the luminous swirls of reds and oranges inside the fruit and out. Everyone loves the sweet, fruity taste, too. Oblong little fruit weighs barely an ounce. Sometimes shows a pronounced beak at the blossom end. Another member of the incredible new Artisan series. So, I don't know what they're talking about when they talk about the Artisan series of tomatoes. I don't know if that's a Baker Creek internal thing or if it is something going on in the gardening community at large. Let's see when we just... I see. Okay. So this basically says they are produced by a small breeder who concentrates on varieties specifically for small growers as well as local and specialty markets. The focus on these fruits combine excellent tomato flavor with unique colors and shapes along with stripes to further distinguish the varieties. Chefs in California, where these fruits originate, find them extremely desirable and versatile in the kitchen. Create your own distinctive dishes from appetizers and salads to main courses. So I guess it's just, it's not Baker Creek exclusive um, 
but the Sunrise Bumblebee Tomato is part of that trend. It looks exciting. I will probably be growing it, but do go ahead and comment if you would like to see it grown. Next up, the Syrian Giant Tomato. Syrian Giant Tomato. wonder if this is unique from the uh, Espensky. A jumbo tomato that doesn't, here's some ads, uh, doesn't compromise on flavor. This family heirloom from West Virginia bears a hefty crop of one pound. Well, that's not nearly the same as one kilo. <laughs> Hard shaped fruits that ripen 80 days from transplant. Pinkish red globes of giant Syrian are juicy and sweet with few seeds. Great for slicing sauce and canning. Indeterminate. Our stock E seedlings are grown and shipped. Oh, yeah, that's about it. All right. So that's what they look like. They're kind of nice little looking variety. About a pound. Still a pretty big variety. Um, comment below if you want to. And then I'll just throw in. There, there are probably some other varieties I'm growing to. Um, but I think we've probably done enough. And so there's one more that I just want to talk about that um, I'm growing this year. I know it to be a determinate variety, which is the Rutgers tomato. It's a very classic determinate variety. And it's determinate. I'm going to use this probably for some experiments that I might be doing and also for just some discussion of growing determinate varieties of tomatoes, along with maybe some of those others that I jotted down on the list as being determinate varieties of tomatoes. So um, I'm excited to try this, even though it is it is very routine, I guess you might say. An heirloom from New Jersey, obviously Rutgers. But yeah, anyhow, so I, I have a, uh, several of those plants that I've started from seed and will be doing a lot of things with the Rutgers, maybe, <laughs> this year. So, but still feel free if you want to see the Rutgers or if you have any questions about it or anything else you'd like us to cover about it, feel free to comment below. Okay, so obviously I got to the point I was kind of rambling and dragging perhaps a little bit at the end. Hopefully we've cleaned that up a bit in our editing process, but... Um, I hope you did enjoy this. If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching this long, long video. And uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about what we're growing. Make sure you do comment below if you would like us to feature any specific variety. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and we'll, we'll have videos on some of these tomatoes this year.